In this video, we'll briefly go over the main features of the TimeFlow view. Additional videos will go into more detail for each of the sections mentioned. First at the top of the window is the main toolbar with playback controls on the left, then work area and looping options, the current time display, musical timing, grid and snap features, and markers on the far right. On the left-hand side of the TimeFlow window, we can see a list of game objects with channels, and on the right, a timeline with an adjustable divider in the middle. There's also additional columns that can be expanded by clicking on the small arrow in the upper right to display channel values and time offsets. Furthest on the left is a panel of switches, which are used to lock objects, toggle visibility, enable or disable behaviors, and solo items. Each of the buttons at the top of the panel can be used to apply display filtering, for example, hiding all locked items by clicking the lock icon at the top. This panel may also be collapsed when not in use by clicking the small arrow here. Objects can be selected in the display list by clicking on them or dragging a marquee box. The drop-down menu and options at the top of the column are used for loading and saving lists of objects, which you can use to aid in managing scenes. In the timeline area on the right, track sections and keyframes can also be selected by clicking on them or dragging a marquee box. Notice that whenever an item is selected, whether that be a keyframe, track, object, or channel, that it has additional settings displayed in the input panel on the lower left, which supports bulk editing for multiple selected items. The timeline area can be switched to the graph view by clicking the toggle button at the bottom of the window or using the shortcut key G. Use the shortcut to toggle between the track view and graph view as needed. Next up, we'll discuss configuring the time flow settings. 